Hey team, the doctrine of mission command has gone through a change recently. In this video, I will help you understand that change, but more importantly, what it means to you as a leader. The original definition of mission command that came out in 2012 is as follows. Mission command is the exercise of authority and direction by the commander using mission orders to enable disciplined initiative within the commander's intent to empower agile and adaptive leaders in the conduct of unified land operations. There were six principles that went along with this definition. Number one, build teams through mutual trust. Use mission orders was number two. Number three, provide a clear commander's intent. Four, create a shared understanding in your organization. Five, empower and exercise discipline initiative. And six, accept prudent risk. Now, the original version of Mission Command and Mission Command in, drag in general struggled with two things. First of all, instead of understanding that command and control was a vital and integral part of Mission Command, command and control almost became a dirty word. People felt like you can't tell me what to do because of Mission Command. All you can do is provide me guidance and I'll figure out what to do. Instead of understanding, there's times when your chain of command is going to tell you what to do and you're going to do it. And that was that command and control part was integral to the concept of mission command. And, and people just kind of struggled with that. Number two is mission command struggled in the garrison environment in the army. In the field and while deployed, mission command and the principles of mission command really caught on and were really used by all leaders. But in the bureaucracy of the army garrison, leaders tended to go back to stifling and micromanaging their subordinates as they were, were tracking stats and, and you know, controlling everything that was going on. So mission command has really struggled to catch on in a garrison environment. Next, we'll talk about the new definition and the one new principle that was added to the concept and doctrine of mission command. Okay, here's the new definition of Mission Command. Mission Command is the Army's approach to command and control that empowers subordinates decision making and decentralized execution appropriate to the situation. So you hear a little bit of a change in that definition. First of all, Mission Command is an approach to command and control. Command and control and Mission Command are integral parts of each other. The other part is we're gonna empower subordinates appropriate to the situation. So there are going to be times where we're going to use command and control very clearly and there are other times and in everything we do that we're going to uh, go towards the side of mission command where we issue clear guidance and empower our subordinates to take the initiative. But it's going to depend on the situation. I'm going to talk more about that later. They also added a principle to mission command. One principle. They kept all six the same, but they added the principle of competence as a key part of being able to exercise mission command in your organization. Next, I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna explain this in layman's term. What does it really mean to me and what does the new definition mean and how does it affect you as a leader? I know mission command might seem a little bit overwhelming. You're like seven principles, this long definition. Let me, let me break it down for you real simply. If you take the seven principles and you kind of put them into some separate bins I think it really breaks down to three things that we have to do as a leader. The first one is build teams. Second, communicate. And third, empower subordinates. When it comes to building teams, first of all, for anybody to follow you in your team, you have to be competent. You have to know what you're doing. And in everything you do, all your training, all your interaction with your subordinates and with your team, you have to build trust. So that's the first thing every leader has got to do is build a team. Second, communicate, communicate, communicate. Whether it's writing succinct, clear mission orders, given that clear guidance and commander's intent at all times, or having a shared understanding, which means you are listening to your subordinates. A big part of communication is not just talking, it's listening. We got two ears and one mouth for a reason. So th communication is that second principle of leadership that we all have to have. And third, we've always got to seek 
to empower our subordinates. We want them to take the discipline initiative in all situations. And we have to be willing to accept risk as we push authority to our subordinates to make decisions. So that's kind of my simple definition of mission command. Build teams through mutual trust, communicate, 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 and empower your subordinates. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. So here's my picture of leadership and specifically leadership using Mission Command. Mission Command operates on a spectrum. On one side of that spectrum, we issue orders and we ensure compliance. That is the science of control that's integral to Mission Command. The other side of the spectrum is I issue guidance to empower the initiative of my subordinates. That's the art of command. One side is the science, the other side is the art. We've got to understand as leaders, we're not always just on one fixed point. We're going to always move across this spectrum based on trust and risk. Let me give you two examples. First of all, with people. If you're a squad leader, you get a brand new team leader, you don't know them, you haven't built up that trust. You're probably going to start on this side of the spectrum until that trust goes up and then you're able to move over here where you can issue guidance and empower the initiative. The second example is with situations. Let's say you're out on patrol and it just started raining and the temperature dropped. That means risk is going up. As risk goes up, I'm probably gonna move a little bit more towards this side and issue specific orders and ensure those orders are followed. So as leaders, we're always moving back and forth on the spectrum based on trust and risk. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. Here's seven ways that you can make this come to life, whether it's in garrison, in the field, or deployed. First of all, always seek to push authority down and pull risk up. That means no matter what the situation is, we always wanna be moving our organizations to this side of the spectrum. Give them the authority to make decisions at the lowest level, <clears throat> and we take the risk as the leader. Number two, you cannot overreact when something goes wrong. Or throughout your whole chain of command, if you're over here, something goes wrong, you overreact, you crush somebody, the whole organization is gonna to move to this side. And only move if you give them an order. That is not what we want. Don't overreact. Number three, as leaders, we have to prioritize. Everything cannot be important. It goes to that clear guidance and intent of what is the priority, what is important. If you give your organization a million priorities, you'll end up over here where they're just trying to comply, comply, comply. Number four, don't overregulate. Leave it open, leave the authority to them. You take the risk. Don't put in so many rules and regulations that your whole organization always operates on this side. And we're very guilty of doing that in a garrison environment. Number five, if you're a commander, control your staff. Staffs love to operate over here. They love to issue orders to the companies and make sure every one of those orders is followed. You've got to check your staff. As a commander, you might be operating over here, but your staff might be firing out orders on this side, you've got to control that. Number six, maintain communication. Remember what I talked about listening? You've got to have communication up and down in order to operate over here. You can't just put out one order and then that's it. We have to constantly communicate to our subordinates to be on the right side of this spectrum. And lastly, you've got to build a training plan that forces your organization to operate on this side of the spectrum and it builds mission command. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in the next video, how to train your organization to build mission command.